I didn't completely put the machine on. I'll, I apologize. I just have so many things going on. Man, sometimes I get a little turtle brained. You can hear me now. Testing one, two, three, four. Test, test. Yeah, I had the machine off. I turned everything else on, except the, uh, what do they call them? Eh, I forgot. Anyway, the volume control. Me and oh man. Did you understand today's lesson, Robert? Utilizing the double power diddle. Okay. Now, I wanted to take it a little further, unless you want me to, to review somewhat the single paradiddle and the double paradiddle as the turnarounds. How would you like me to do this for you? Because there's two more phrases, or phases rather, to the single paradiddle uh, turnarounds, drum set application, and the double paradiddle, drum set application. All right? Okay, you understood it. Okay, not a problem. Right, one thing I'd like to talk about first, I just received a book in the mail. Drum Lessons, George Lawrence Stone. Okay, and this is written by a friend of mine who I met uh, when I was studying with Joe Morello. He studied with Joe, obviously. And him and Joe wrote this book. Barry James, you may know him. Right now, he's residing in Florida, and if he was local, I would invite him um, here for the, uh, the round table. Now, you understand the, the, the single stroke, the, the turnarounds with sixteenths, like this? So we can start there. Now, what I do, there's a couple different applications, three, actually two more different applications, and I kind of hit on it a little bit last night, moving from drum to drum. But we're going to stay on the snare drum, and we're going to put all right-hand accents on the floor tom-tom, all left-hand accents on the small tom-tom. So, for example, if I did line three, if I, I did line three on one surface, it would be one E and the two. Now, the application I want to do is take the accent, if it's a right-hand accent, place it on the floor tom-tom. If it's a left-hand accent, place it on the small tom-tom. So we have the first, the line three would be one E and the two E, then three E and the four E and the one. Now, you see that movement? You see what I just did? The accent is going right hand accent on the floor tom tom, left hand accent on the small tom tom. So we have one E and the two. Four there. Okay, it's a very simple exercise. The thing is, it's body movement around the drum set without disrupting the, the uh, time. Make it minimal amount of energy. So we have this here.
that's line three. Let's go to line five. That's the paradiddle itself. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, the alternating paradiddle. So we, we have this. We have one E M the two E M the three E M the four E. One E M the two E M the three. Let me do that again for you. So you have line five it would be one E and the that's, that should be a paradiddle. One E and the two. should be a right. Do you understand that? I'll slow it down a little bit. I don't have the sheet on it. That's going to be in the book. One. Yeah, one. I want to do it slow. I don't want to be 9,000 miles an hour so you really don't understand it. I'm making a few mistakes. My left hand is acting up again, and I sincerely apologize. Now, there's quite a few guys watching. It would be so very nice of them to get into the chat. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. Do you understand the, the concept or the approach, uh, Robert, and whoever else wants to join in on the chat? You got it. Okay. Do you happen to have... Uh, by Charlie Wilcox in Rudimental Swing. Do you happen to have that book? Rudimental Swing. Yes or no? No? Oh, yes, maybe. All right, let's do the same thing now with the double paradiddle. That's the grouping of six. Remember how we're doing the grouping of six. One and two and three and one. Look at the level in there. Okay? Now we did like line three was one and two and three and one. So on and so forth. Now you don't have the book. That's okay. I'll write out a lesson for tomorrow afternoon from that book. It has to deal with the single paradiddle, and it's maneuvering around the drum set, okay? But the, sing the double paradiddle with the, uh, the turnarounds utilizing the double paradiddle, same concept. Line three, you'd have one and two and three. Okay? It's a simple process. You'd like me to play some more lines for you? You understand it. I can move on. Now, you said to me last night, you do a lot of rock tunes. You ever do any jazz tunes? You ever play any jazz? So you don't want me to go on, you just... You want, you, do you understand a yes or no? Let me, let me ask you that. You don't play any jazz. You understand the concept of straight up and down and swung, correct? Jazz, jazz, jazz. Okay, you understand it. All right. You understand the concept, not a problem. Do you understand, understand song structure, the basic concept of song structure, like the A, A, B, A, in a 12-bar blues? Do you understand that? Are you getting subtitles on the video, Robert? Because I am. I don't know why. 
You understand the AABA. -A -A. Okay, so now you need to work on the mechanics of developing uh, independence or interindependence, whatever you want to call it. Playing the straight ahead jazz time. Left foot two and four. And we could use. Uh, no, you don't understand it. Okay. Do you li ever listen to. Uh, let's let's uh, go to Miles Davis. Okay. There's the A. Usually the norm for a jazz tune is 32 measures. That's the norm. Some, you know, you have a special arrangement. You know, you might tag on an additional eight measures in the beginning. But usual, it's A, A, B, A, 32 measures. A would be eight measures. B, A, again, would be eight measures. B, which is the bridge, that would be eight measures. And A, again, would be another eight measures, so that's 32 me measures. For example, if I had a tune, Milestones, bump, 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 uh, uh. Uh, 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 ooh, uh. Now, what I just did is I hummed the A section. And I repeat the A section. And I go to the bridge. That was an additional eight measures. So now I have 24 measures total. And I go back to the eight me uh, the, the A section. Bop, 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 So I did two A sections, one B, and, and back to the A, which totals 32 measures. That's Now, the way that works, the norm, when I say norm, What does A mean? A is the beginning. It's the first eight measures. You have A, then it repeats itself again, A. So you have two sections, A, A. Each section is eight measures. So if I did A twice, that would be 16 measures. I did B, the bridge, that's an additional eight measures. That's 24 measures. And I do the last A uh, again. That's an additional eight measures, which totals 32 measures. Now, that's considered the head of the tune, okay? Now, what I do, th the norm is they do the head twice, then the improv comes. Now, the, 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 uh, the head is pronouncing the tune that the band is playing. Once the improv comes on, that tune is still going on, but it's not so pronounced. Say the, the saxophone player is going to take the first uh, chorus, or the first improv. He's thinking A, A, B, A, 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 B, A. Now, there's no set pattern to as how many times you're going to do that. If he's saying something, okay, musically, you let him go. Then after he gets finished his improv, the next instrument plays, say the piano. He goes... He's thinking A, A. They're improv off the melody. The musicians are having a conversation with each other from the melody. Okay? That's a structure. That's a standard structure. After the piano player, maybe the bass player. He's going A, A, B, A. A, A, B, A. A, A, B, A. Then you got it, the drummer. You do a, two or three verses. Each verse is 32 measures. You understand that? Now, what I'm teaching is your independence. It takes a lot of practice, and it takes a long, long time. Okay, anybody can play time to, the, to a, a tune. I'm sure, you know, you had uh, listened to a tune whether it was rock or, or any kind of fusion or a jazz tune, you were, you were uh, tapping your foot. So you actually keep playing time. If you don't know what you're, where you're at, you're going to get confused. 
I don't know what your living situation is, Robert, uh, but do you have any uh, jam sessions, open jams in your area? If you do, I would highly recommend going to them. I went to many, many jam sessions and literally got my ass kicked. And I was put in a position where I didn't know the tune. I said, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. So whenever that occurs, you do the best you can, and you play time. And as the tune goes around a few times, you could hear the melody. Or if you don't know the melody and you really want to really get into the tune, when you go home and you practice that tune, hum it. That's the new breed. Okay? Uh, you're humming a figure while you're playing. That's the beginning of this concept. Do you have the new breed by Char uh, <coughs> Gary Chester? Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to hit on that. I'm going to hit on it again tomorrow afternoon. You seem to be the only guy in the chat, and there's other guys watching this, and nobody's in the chat. I don't know why. Okay, so we'll talk somewhat. I don't know. Do you have Skype, Robert? We could talk on, on Skype. You could download that. That's free. All you need is a camera and a mic. Okay? And we could talk about it. If you have Skype, come on, mouse. I'm going to give you my Skype contact. That's my Skype contact, okay? Oh, you don't have it. If you don't have it, that's P-A-T-E-L-L, -L, I'm sorry, A. If you don't have it, you could download it to your computer. It's free. <clears throat> you should have a mic or a camera, and we could talk. And it's better sometimes, it's really better, you know, this screen and the chat and the delay is, is crazy. Okay, so... Well, I said, like, I'm going to do this over again tomorrow, and I'm going to have a, maybe a sheet with the paradiddles maneuvering around the drum set, okay? I right, check into it. We could talk one-on-one. -on -one. All right, what I want to do uh, tonight is a few... We talked about the levels, if you remember, this afternoon. What's the difference between the Adler system and the Moeller system? And I, I come playing out right and said you know, throw that shit away. You know, it's the laws of physics and the level system. The free stroke, the downstroke, the tap, and the upstroke. They're control strokes, a.k.a. control strokes. So, we're going to start, we're going to do accents. Now, I, I have to apologize because my left hand is out of commission. It really is. So, for example, here's a, here's, and you're going to reference it off the stick control book. Uh, maybe I should do this on, on the drum pit. Oh. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to play with the, the right hand straight eighth notes. One and two and three and four and over and over again. One and two and three and four and I'm about the half stroke position. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay. So now we go to the stick control book, the first line. It's written one and two and three and four and. Okay. We eliminate the rights. So we're going to play just the rights. But this is going to keep going on. And that's going to tell me where there's an accent. So I'm going to have one and two and three, four. Accent, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. You see where I got the, the accent? One, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, so you have, 
where everybody go? Okay, so we we'll go to the second line. And you have the ands. All the rights fall on the ends. So now you have one and, two and, three and, four and, one and, two and, three and, four and. So that's line one, which is two, three, four and, one, two, three. Maintain the sound. Up, down, up, down. And line, line two would be the reverse. Hey, Paul. Uh, we were working with the turnarounds in 6 8, double paradiddle. Right now, I'm just helping Robert with the, uh, an accent exercise. We're referencing off of the stick control book, eliminating all the lefts, and wherever the right falls, that's where the accent is. Example line one, if I'm playing this underline about a half stroke, one and two and three and four and, I look at the stick control book, all the rights are falling on one, two, three, four. So therefore, I'm going to have this, one and two, three, four and, one, two, three, four. I look at line two. All the rights are falling on the ands. So I'm going to have one and, two and, three and, four, one and, two and, three and, four and. Now you hear the difference in sound with the upstroke and the downstroke. The upstroke is, is soft, the downstroke is the accent, pop. Now that's pretty good exercise on the downbeat and the upbeat for the accent. Now like I just told Robert, I really can't use my left hand because it's really hurting very bad. I have to go for treatment like I keep telling everybody, some sort of elect electronic uh, treatment plus an MRI. Okay, so we'll go to line three. And remember now, we're playing, okay, eighth notes here, one level. It's constant. So with that being played, I'm counting one and two and three and four and. The accent's going to fall on one and and three and. So I have one is free stroke and down stroke. Two and three and four. You understand that, Robert? Was that? Yeah, I hope it gets. It will get better. I mean, you know, if it was okay, I would do that with the left hand. One, and, two, and, and that hurts. It really does. So I'm just referring. You know, what I do with the right, usually you do to the left. Say, say you want to do four measures with line one, with the right hand, then do four measures with the left hand, the same line. What's that? No, you don't understand that. Do you understand this, Robert? It's such a delay. I, I, I don't know the question I asked. All right, I'm going to not ask another question except this one. Robert, do you understand where I'm getting the accents? Yes or no? I'm not going to ask another question until I get your answer, Robert. Line three, okay. You understand line one and line two. Now line three, you're going to have two accents in a row. So if I look at line three, the right hand is full on one and and three and. That's going to be my accents. I have this guy. 
I'm playing this over and over again. So now I have two right hand accents in a row. I need to maintain position. Okay, so line three, the first, the first accent would be a free stroke. I'm in position now to hit the and. But the and has to be a downstroke, and. So I'm going to do one and again. One, and. Now two is just a tap. Two, and the and of two is an upstroke to get in position to nail three and. And, that's two and, that's the end of two. Then I have three and, four and. Free stroke, down, tap, up. Free stroke, down, tap, up. No, it's not one and two. On line three, the accent is on one end and three end. Okay, I'll do line three again. Line three says one end is a right and three end is a right. This is the bottom. Now, that's, I, I call it the underlining mo mo movement. I want to accent one and three. Now, if I do one, because I'm going to have another accent on the end, I have to be in position to nail that. One, it's a free stroke. I'm in position to nail the next accent. And, after the, eight, the one and, the, the two is a tap. And after that, the, the and of two is an upstroke. Because now I'm in position to nail three. Three, that was an accent. And then the and of three is an accent. So I'm going to come down on that one. And, four is a tap, and and is an upstroke. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. This is all in workbook two. Is it a little bit clearer? All right, you understand it. All right, every line has its own personality and its own uh, development for the accent. That was line three. In line four, you're accenting two and and four and. You have two accents in a row when you come to two and. You have a free stroke and a down stroke. When you have one is a tap, and is an upstroke. Two is a free stroke, the and of two is a down stroke, and it repeats itself. Okay, I'm going to write this out somewhat a little bit. It'll be easier for you. Now, it gets a little bit more involved after line, line four, because now you look at line five. It's the alternating paradiddle. I'm going to accent the count of one, two and, and the and of three. Now, there's a lot of movement going on, because I'm, I'm, I have to get in position to nail the accent. I have to hit the accent, and then get in position to nail it. So if I did line five, okay, that's the first right would be an accent, but the note after it is a tap. No, it's an, actually, it's an upstroke. One, I'm sorry, one, and. Line five, Robert, one, and. Now you have two rights. You have two, and. Then you have three, and, four, and. Let me write this out for you and send it to you. That's uh, the eighth note. Now, Paul, pay attention to this guy. That's, that's accent development number one. We're now going to do the same kind of con interpretation, all the rights. But this time, instead of playing eighth notes, we're going to play eighth note triplets. All right, so now we play eighth note triplets. We have one and the two and the three and the four and the. Now I look at line one. My accent is on the count of one, two, three, four. So I have 
one and the, two and the, three and the, four and the. We understand line one? Now, a lot of people get confused. They refer to that as a whip. It's not a whip. It's a pumping motion with my elbow. My, my elbow goes into my side. You see that? I mean, if I'm playing up-tempo, I'll be flying away, man. All right, now, do you understand line one? We're referencing off of all the rights. But underlining now, we have the triplet. One and the two. Now, Robert, do you understand why it's a downstroke, a tap, and an upstroke? Do you understand that? That's what's important. All right, so now we go to line two. The right hand is going to shift on the duh of the triplet. So we have one and duh, two and duh, three and duh, four and duh. Line one again, one, two, three, four. Go to line two, one and duh, two and duh. So on and so forth. It's a great exercise to get smacked around a little bit when your levels are not in place. All right, line three. We have one da and three da. So we have one and da, two and da, three and da, four and da. Now, if I was using my left hand, I could use most of those uh, eighth, note extra, eighth note triplet exercises of vamp and playing the stick control book down with my right hand and vice versa. I'm playing with my right now. I could play all the lefts down with my left hand on the stick control book. You know, the stick control book is the most amazing book there is, in my opinion. Okay? And I posted in the art of drumming groups or a couple of the art of drumming groups that every drummer should have a copy of the stick control book. Boom, everybody agreed except one guy. Ah, that's a nonsense book. Well, it is a whole mess of sticking and exercises. Well, that's pretty sad because, man, he's just eliminating from his drumming the brilliance of George Lawrence Stone. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not, but as you see, by hanging out here, okay, you're starting to see all the variety of ways to interpret the stick control book. Sure, it's not written. It's an exercise book, yes. You get a competent teacher. He can show you the formulas. It, you know, it's something I discovered, something I uh, put together, and I believe... I mean, there were other books, man, but that's where everybody got it from, the stick control book. That's my opinion. Now, I'll probably get some feedback and probably have a hit on me or something. I don't know. Now, we have two authors. This one's not going to be here. Barry James. This is available on Amazon, Drum Lessons with George Lawrence Stone. Now, you have to remember, uh, Joe Morello studied with George Lawrence Stone for quite some time, and he was brilliant. Okay, so, like I said, he, I, I met him first uh, when he was studying with Joe, and then uh, lost contact with him, and I recently got in touch with him a couple years back on Facebook, and he's now residing in, Cal in uh, Florida. However, if he was here, local, like within the tri-state area, I would have him here March the 1st. And we have Steve Forrester, who is on the same page as this kind of stuff, from uh, Joe Morello. And 
uh, Jeffrey Johnson with the uh, level system. It's going to be a great uh, broadcast. It's going to probably be a very long one. And there's going to be arguments. You know, whenever Al and I get together, we always not argue, argue, but we disagree with things, okay? And uh, it turns into a little bit of a war. He don't talk to me for a month, and I don't talk to him either. It's like husband and wife. I happen to think that Alan Herman is extremely brilliant, and he has this concept down, and he understands the laws of physics, and he will explain it come March the 1st. Okay, now I'm going to try to uh, write some of this stuff out, just sort of a couple lines here, a couple lines there, okay? Because I don't want to do like 24 lines, because 24 lines is going to be in workbook number two. There's one more I want to do. We did the eighth notes. We did the eighth note triplets. Now we're going to do the 16th notes. Now, if you look, the way I interpreted the first time with the eighth notes was one and two and three and four and. That was one measure. One and two and three and four and two measures. That's the line. You repeat it. Now, the way you should interpret it on this next, next one is in 16th notes. One E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and. Uh. Now, if you look at line one, again, we eliminate the left. So all the rights, if you interpret that as one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the, uh, all the rights are falling on one and two and three and four and. In essence, what happens is the first exercise you did in eighth notes, well, this is the same thing, but it's double time. So if I did line one, well, this concept would be one, E, and, the, two, E, and, the. Let me try to do one time through with the eighth notes and then go to the sixteenth. Another way to do it. You understand the concept of the sixteenths? One, E, and, the, two, E, and, the, three, E, and, the, four, E, and, the. Okay? Line two would be one, E, and, the, two, E, and the three E and the four E and the and line three would be one E and the two E and the now I feel bad guys I can't use my left hand that much because it's very agonizing and it's very, it's very painful at the moment. And to get these uh, appointments with these specialists, man, it takes forever. I went and got this thing in December. I, don't, I can't get, uh, well, the 23rd of this month is my first appointment with a pain management doctor. And after that, I have to go get some treatment, uh, electrodes or whatever you call I don't know what the hell they, they do. They put pins in your, your hand and shoot you up with electricity. <laughs> That should be fun, and it will come back. Okay, so I, th I think that should be enough for tonight. I sincerely appreciate, and it's a little slow tonight here, the 8 o'clock issue here. And uh, I couldn't get out of what I had to do. So back tomorrow night at 7 p.m., this channel. Starting next week, we're going to do the 1 p.m. YouTube and the 7, excuse me, the 7 p.m. my site. Are there any questions ooh, here, about tonight? The turnarounds in 6-8, the uh, turnarounds in, uh, not 6-8, the double paradiddle, turnarounds with the single paradiddle. 
and these vamping. I have one more. These exercises with the uh, <laughs> stick control book and eighth notes and sixteenths and eighth note triplets. I want one more. All right, and that's a sixteenth note triplet. Do we have? A, do we understand what a sixteenth note triplet is? With one hand, one and two and three and four and. So if I did line one with the accent, the, line, the accent would fall on one. One and two and. On line two, the accent would fall on the ends. One, uh, one and two and three and four and. Line three, one and two and. I'm going to write them out. It's, it's easier so you visualize them. And then we talked about the jazz, the uh, song structure, A, A, B, A. I hope that helped you out a little bit somewhat there, Robert. Okay? And tomorrow night we'll hit on some other things. What I'm starting to think it's a good move is like where we left off with this lesson, kind of review some of it for the, this, uh, in the afternoon. And the same thing with the evening. What I did in the afternoon, review a little bit in the evening. This way here, you know, there's a lot of, it's, I've been teaching a thousand years. And a lot of students are kind of like afraid to say, well, I don't understand it. You know, that's not a good thing because you need to be humble. And if you don't understand it, you're going to remain, you know, still, you're not going to go forward. So if you don't understand something, like I, I'm giving you uh, the email my email, you could ask me a question or have a request to work on something. That's not a problem. Or I just uh, put my Skype uh, address there. If you're going to download Skype, Robert, download it and we could talk. It's better than all these this printing and whatever. Okay, and the, and the delay. Now, Paul, how are we making out with the videos, guys? You're supposed to submit to me some videos. You guys shy, camera shy, or what? I'm not going to put them all over the, the, the YouTube, I mean, YouTube or Art of Drumming. What you send me is between you and I. Fair enough, gentlemen. All right, if there's no questions, I need to get off. Okay. Good for you, Robert. Remember, if you do have a question and you're not sure of something, please email me. Same thing with you, Paul. Okay? I hope it was an interesting lesson. And I'm trying to make... Okay. The vids. It's TH, not TG. All right. You don't have to give me a whole, you know, a big solo. Just do an exercise. Show me how you do the parody. Don't talk in it. Don't be afraid. You downstroke, upstroke, tap, tap, or how you do a double paradiddle, or you're going to do the accents, or you're going to do the, the turnarounds. Explain to me what, you, what you're doing and, and do it. This way here, I can see where I'm going with everybody, and it really helps me help you. Okay, guys, no questions. I need to sign off. I will be back tomorrow. Afternoon, 1 p.m. Paul, play hooky from school. Call in sick. Eh. Okay, guys, have a good night, and I'll be back tomorrow, 1 p.m. on YouTube.